Hi everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. If you are new here, my name is Abby Aslan and I just do a lot of like vlogs, lifestyle content and I really wanted to do just like a traditional old fashioned get ready with me and like trying new products and that kind of thing but we're gonna do a whole glow up routine so I'm going to dinner like later like a lot later tonight because it's only it's three o'clock right now and our reservations aren't until like 8 15 so I thought it would be really fun to just do an old-fashioned like glow up video with like going from this post workout grocery store run all the things hair wash day everything like that to my final ready self have a guest coming <laughs> so yeah super excited to be doing this video but before we get started be sure you're subscribed and turn on post notifications so you don't miss an upload i love these videos so much i think in another life i was a makeup youtuber instead of like lifestyle sometimes this is how i started watching youtube videos back in like 2012 2013 when i like really first started watching videos on youtube consistently and like subscribing to people just thought it'd be fun to do a little glow up routine video with me, so let's do it. I went to a spin class this morning, I've got my glasses on, I shaved my legs, I'm going to self tan because why not? So starting off with the shower, since I am gonna be self tanning, I will be exfoliating in the shower. I'm going to be using this Way scalp and body scrub. I love this stuff so much. I'll leave everything linked down below that I talk about, but I just had like water playing off my hands. This stuff lathers into a soap almost when you use it so instead of like the tree hut scrubs which we all know and love um this is more it like scrubs into your skin and it sort of dissolves into a soapy lather which i really really like instead of it just kind of going on your skin and then like rinsing off um and it's very very good i felt like my skin felt like brand new after i use it you can also use it on your scalp which i think i'm going to try today i haven't done that yet and then i'm also going to be using this way thick hair mask typically i would put my hair mask in before i wash my hair and get in the shower but I typically like to use this actually on my hair wash days as my conditioner. I feel like my hair, if I use conditioner and a hair mask, it's a little too much sometimes. This one is so, so, so great. It makes my hair so incredibly soft and easy to put product in. For shaving, I use the Billy razor and I just get like new blades every month. Speaking of, I need to, or no, I think I get them every six weeks. I need to, I'm not the best about replacing them when they need to be replaced because I just always forget about it but I am gonna replace this one. Lily sent me PR like summer of 2020 and I've been using their razors pretty much since then. So I love them. I'm going to tell you all how I style my hair um, when I'm wearing it curly because I will be wearing it curly tonight. It's way too humid to even try to straighten it and think it'll look okay. So what I do, which I desperately need a haircut. I haven't had my haircut since January and I'm trying to wait till I go home, but I don't even know if I'm gonna have time to when I go home for Memorial Day. How I do my hair, so when I have the thick hair mask in my hair at the end of my shower, instead of just like rinsing it out, I will flip my head upside down and let the water like hit right here. And that's kind of how I rinse it out. I just use my hands and kind of rinse it like that. I'll grab my little sun bum wide tooth, tooth comb and just comb all my hair like this while it's upside down. You're gonna be upside down for a little while, so keep that in mind. So I just comb it to make sure it's all kind of like cohesively going down. And then I'll put a little bit of this Olaplex number six bond smoother just on the very ends of my hair. I will do that while my hair is upside down after I comb it. And I have a lot of like curly hair favorite products. There's honestly so many great products out there on the market, but recently I've really been loving this combination. Um, I've been using just this for a while in combination with like some other stuff, but I decided to try out like both of these together because I figured they probably work best when they go together. So after I put the Olaplex in, while my hair is upside down still, and you don't want to run your fingers through your hair, you just want to comb it that one time and let your hair naturally form into little clumps. And I'll put in, I'll like shake this up really well because it tends to get a little liquidy since I have it sitting in my shower. And I'll shake it up so that it can get more foamy and put some in my hair and I just kind of like, I don't run my hands through my hair. That's like a big, big important point. I don't like do that like with my fingers. I just kind of put it on my hair and like grab my hair and do this and scrunch it. So it's like I will, I'll put the mousse on like right here on the top of my hair and then I will just scrunch like that. I'm still upside down. I'll get about a dime to a quarter size of this and put it in my hands and just rub my hands together. And you'll see that your hair has like its natural curly clumps after you scrunch it. And then I will just scrunch one more time with that gel. 
And then while I'm upside down, I'll kind of reach outside my shower and grab my Aki hair towel, which I need to go grab. It's a microfiber hair wrap towel. While I'm upside down, I'll grab like the little button side and I'll stick it over my hair like so. I'll give it one last little scrunch on just the ends and then I'll wrap it and then pin it like this. So, and then I'll let it sit like that for like an hour. I don't like to let it sit in the towel wrap for too, too long because it'll get a little frizzy, but anywhere from like 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes, I feel like it's a safe time for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop in the shower. But first, let's light a candle and get the mood going. Starting off for skin prep, I'm using this Beja Flor Elastic Cream from Sol de Janeiro that smells like the Baccarat Rouge perfume. It smells so good, my boyfriend compliments me every time I wear it, and I love putting this on for self-tanner. Also gonna go ahead and dermaplane my face with just some aloe vera gel and these Japanesque dermaplaners from Target that I love and always repurchase. I just pretty much put the aloe all over my face after the shower, just so I'm not doing the dermaplaning on completely dry skin. And then I just do all downward motions pretty much for like my cheeks and that kind of area, mustache, eyebrows, that kind of thing to dermaplane. And then once I touch everything up, just going in with a mighty patch on this pimple I had. And while that sits, then I self tanned with the butter from Tan Lux. This is a really good, super natural self tanner that is super easy to apply since it's like lotion, so I really love this stuff. Hey y'all, it is a way later. I have self tanned, I'm in my robe now, and I just finished up planning my CPA studying video for you guys, finally. <laughs> I haven't filmed it yet. But anyways, we're finally getting moving on to makeup. Skincare, I don't really do a lot of skin prep when it comes to wearing makeup, because I feel like I don't really use a specific moisturizer right now. I use like heavy moisturizers at night and during the daytime, I typically will just have like an SPF moisturizer on, but I have not figured out an ideal moisturizer to go under my makeup that doesn't like mess with the makeup too much. And maybe I just put the products on together too quickly and that's why it doesn't work. So for skin prep, I do, I don't have any self tanner on my face. I do normally put on the number like 12, I think, um, Lux Unfiltered Drops from Savan Ayla's brand. And I will probably do that like tomorrow, but I'm not going to do that today since I'm gonna be putting on makeup anyways. And I'll probably just be trying to match like my neck, honestly. But the self tanner is very like subtle. It's like nothing crazy as you can probably tell. Um, I am in like bright lighting right now, but it's just very natural. So for skin prep, all I have on right now is Hyaluronic Acid from The Ordinary. I put that on earlier because my face just felt really dry and that was a while ago and i took off the pimple patch but the pimple's way too young to be have anything extracted so i'm just gonna try not to mess with it but we're gonna start off with the Alu's beauty oil um a lot of these recommendations i'm gonna be using are from makeup xka as you all know so i've been following her since i like started grad school because my friend savannah introduced me to her when she had like 5,000 followers and yeah but a lot of these recs are from her but a lot of them also aren't so, um, I will say I don't watch as much like makeup content at all as I used to, just because a lot of the people I watch don't really upload anymore, I feel like, or I used to watch, I used to only watch Kathleen Lights and I just feel like she doesn't upload that much or maybe I just don't see it, but we're going to do a little bit of the Benefit Professional next on just like the more pory spots, so like my chin and right here, I'm going to do my nose. my cheek area. Also, I think I had a poppy seed in my teeth earlier when I was introing the video. So sorry about that. I ate a salad earlier that had poppy seed dressing and I didn't realize it until after I got out of the shower and was flossing my teeth and I was like, this has been in my mouth this whole time I've been talking about my hair and introing the video. Lovely. Being a LaCroix limoncello, so good. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the Smashbox Primerizer. Um, I love this stuff. It's just very moisturizing. I kind of like think of this as my moisturizer before my makeup Just because it feels very hydrating and I like that. It's like a primer that's Moisturizing and made for your makeup instead of just using like this super thick lotion that doesn't really help And then now I'm going to go in with my Charlotte Tilbury 
flawless filter this is the shade three and light medium and i'm just going to do this on the spots on my face that i like that naturally sort of catch light you know and rub it in with my hands also gotta give a huge shout out to my base makeup case that i love y'all know i used to have the pink one but i ended up getting this black one because they remade them to where the um inside can be literally wiped out with like a paper towel and water and the makeup just comes right out whereas the one i have was like the first gen of the um, makeup case and it wasn't like that and it just kind of stained it so I bought myself a new one and because I wanted to be able to clean it out easily. Have I cleaned it once? No, <laughs> but for the day when it comes that I clean it, I will be able to. For foundation, I'm going to mix a tad of this Dior Forever Skin Glow. This is like for when I'm like tan from the sun, very tan from the sun, and um, this is the shade 3N. I do really like this foundation though. I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. And then this luminous silk is in the shade five so i'm just going to do like a little half pump of luminous silk on my hands and then do my dog is literally trying to eat my foundation and i'm going to do a little half pump of the dior and then i'm going to mix it with my pinky finger and then i'm just going to paint this with my finger onto my face this is still probably going to be a little dark but we'll make it work what makeup product have y'all been obsessed with lately well, let me know because I'd love to hear it. There's a lot I want to try out, but I'm just like not letting myself buy new makeup because I just know I don't need it deep down. Um, so I'm trying to be better about not just buying makeup because it has good reviews and stuff. Okay, I think I'm gonna use my fingers to blend it out because that's, I don't really want like a heavy foundation feel that like a brush can give sometimes. Blender out the fingers. I honestly never really get much foundation on my forehead, I feel like. I just feel like you don't need a lot right there because that's where it can look cakey really, really fast. So I always do like, a really small amount for the most part on my forehead that's just a me i'm gonna grab my damp beauty blender and then just sort of pat this all in to make sure it's all soaked in the skin i'm gonna go in with my naked skin peach color corrector and put this over like my dark circles and then my dark spots where i have like a pimple or acne scarring um just to help with that discoloration almost out of this and they don't make it anymore and i've literally had it since like may of 2020 so and it's lost to me a really long time i'm dabbing this in with my beauty blender this feels so good to be doing this video like it just feels right i feel giddy inside right now so fun and i'm using my finger on the spots that i covered for acne just to get better coverage instead of the sponge okay now we're going in with the kosas concealer this is the 1.5 c shade to brighten up and i'm gonna do a little bit under the under eyes and then a little bit on the lid between my eyebrows and i'm gonna let it sit for a second I use my nars concealer which is in the shade creme 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 brulee i can't say it and i'm using this to spot conceal it's definitely still lighter than the foundation but it's darker than my kosas concealer and i just need something to spot conceal my acne and i'm using my finger again on the acne when you use a brush and beauty blender sometimes i feel like you're moving the product around so on spots i like to use my finger now going in with this sephora pro concealer number 71 brush to blend out this concealer i used to not use a i, th I just thought i had a new freckle on my face and i was like did i just gain a freckle in a matter of seconds no i don't know what that is on my face um please go I, I like using this brush i just recently started using a brush for concealer and i just really like it for a more even and like full coverage because a lot of times with the beauty blenders it does pick up a lot of the product so this is nice for like actually concealing the under eyes and brightening them up and i try to pat it in i try to be really good about like not dragging but when i'm in a hurry i definitely do drag sometimes i think with the eyelid because i just have like pretty veiny eyelids so i like to conceal them yeah i just feel like that really does a lot for me in terms of brightening up the under eye first i'm going to powder my under eye area and i'm just going to take a dry like old real technique sponge that i'm not really using right now and then use this hourglass veil translucent setting powder this stuff is so good and i've had it for a long time and i use it every literally every time i put on makeup because i always have to set my under eye and i'm just going to press the narrow end into the powder and then like sort of dab it on the end of my hand just to like make it less um cakey and then 
press it under my eye. Just to like really make sure that the concealer is nice and set. And then do the same thing for the other eye. Give it a little press press. And press her in. Now I'm gonna go in with this Morphe M510 brush. I'm gonna use the little amount that's in the lid from when I shook it. And I'm going to put this on my eyelid just so that the eyeshadow goes on more smoothly and isn't like tugging at the skin because if I don't set the concealer on my eyelid, I notice that the eyeshadow does not go on near as like smoothly and it's a lot more patchy. I should probably get back to my primer potion days. <laughs> if you know, you know. I remember those primer potions were like literally everything. When the Sin color of the primer potion came out, that was so iconic because that was literally the best color in the Naked um, original Naked palette. You cannot tell me otherwise. And yeah, just trying to make sure that this is all set. I kind of dust it along my nose too, like whatever's left over. I'm gonna take whatever's left in the actual powder on the this big fluffy Eco Tools brush and put this on my neck just to set the foundation that we brought down on the neck because I want to prevent it from transferring. It probably still could, but you don't want to hug somebody and turn their clothes into the color of your foundation. And so it just stays in place and makes things more cohesive. Now we're going in with the Dead's Beauty Stick. Mine is in the shade, this is the Desert Island Duo and mine is in the shade Spill the Tea. Put a little bit on the back of my hand. I normally don't do this, but we're gonna try it today. We're gonna try something new. I'm gonna take my It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe Complexion Perfection Brush, the wider end of it, and dip it into the contour on the back of my hand. And then I'm going to, I need a mirror. I cannot do this from this far away without my glasses on. And I'm going to just kind of like press this into right above where the hollow of my cheekbone is. Normally I stick it directly on my foundation, but for the sake of hopefully keeping my foundation in better shape, we're gonna do this instead. I'm gonna go into like my jawline and my forehead and just sort of work it. And down the center of my neck, I've seen the TikTok trick for that. Okay, one last little bit. I feel like I use more product this way. I'm gonna take the last little bit on the smaller side and just sort of lightly contour the nose a little bit. And blend it out with the big side. Basically just like going all over the nose. There's no really like specific way to do it. I just kind of go on the sides and then the end. We're gonna go back to that dry beauty blender and we're going to sort of chisel out the bottom of the contour just a little bit. Like it's baking, but like not intensely. It's just like a soft bake to carve out your cheeks a little bit more, which I don't really know if I need that. My face is so round. I recently got my, dry, my temporary driver's license in Texas. Like I'm waiting on my real one to come in the mail. I got my picture taken and I can't believe I'm saying this, but I prefer my 16 year old picture to my new 24 year old picture. It looks like my face completely changed shape from when I was 16 to 24. And I think in my, I remember like specifically when I was taking my picture at the DMV for my 16 year old, like my first license in Florida, I like kind of turned my, I didn't like turn my head to the side, but like, Instead of being straight on like this, I was like slightly like that, like just a little bit because I do not like the right side of my face at all. And I just try to like cover, or like not even cover, just angle myself at a more flattering angle. And I should have tried to do that again. I just feel like the camera was like slightly under me, if that makes sense. So it's like this awkward from underneath, not even like super far under, but just like slightly down enough to where it's not flattering on your face. It's just really not good on the new one. I think my hair also like played a part in that. I'm like day three or four hair in this new license picture. And um, it just looked a little like bad on the top. So I think that that definitely played a role. As you can see, it's just a bare minimum just to sort of carve out a little bit of cream contour we did do. Um, and also just to set that part of the foundation. And going in with the rest of the powder one more time on my chin since I did put cream contour like along my jawline. I didn't put the powder here earlier, but I am putting it here now to set this spot. I wanna say, out of all the products I'm mentioning in today's video, if you want to buy something, I would recommend buying this. 
It's not a setting powder, which sucks. Like it's not going to, maybe if you use enough of it, it would be, which I have hit pan, but there's like still products on the side. So I would try to like get it out of the side. I already, I've had a backup ready for like two months. Cause I just can't go a day without it if I'm wearing makeup. And it's the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. This is one that is in the shade Dim Light. And it's kind of like a powder highlighter, which you could use it as a highlighter and it would be pretty subtle. I use it as an all over like dusting face powder, not to set my face because I don't, I used to set my entire face with translucent powder and then do this, but it was just, it looked fine. Like I don't think it ever looked too cakey because I always used a light amount of powder anyways, but layering the two, I just started to realize that it looked better if I would kind of like spot set under my eyes and then under my contour and then use this over the rest of my face and to dust away the little bit of powder. So yeah, I just swirl my big brush around in here on the edges trying to get what's left on my brush and I just use it to brush away the cream contour. Oh, I haven't done the cream blush yet. We're only, so we're only gonna do this on the bottom half of the face right now. I'm gonna wait to set the rest until I do my cream blush. And like I said, this was not a setting powder really in the sense that it like sets things, but I just think it's like this beautiful lit from within type of glow finish. Okay, let me do cream blush because, and then we'll finish the face with the powder. Using the other side of the dipstick, it's this beautiful pink. I'm actually gonna put this directly on my cheeks because I don't want it to like wash out. I don't know, maybe I won't. I'm conflicted now. Okay, no, we're gonna put it on the brush. How about that? Got it on the brush and then I'm gonna dab it on my hand like once or twice. And then I'm going to just stick it right on my cheek. I've been doing the blush higher up, like right here and that's it. And I used to always bring it on the apples of my cheeks and I'm starting to wonder if that just isn't flattering for my face shape. Like, I don't really know. That's my issue. I feel like I can do my makeup well, but like I just like see trends on TikTok and I'm like, oh, let me try that. And then I do it for a long time. And I don't even know if it's like what looks best on me. Like, cause I think anything can look okay. Like if I apply it, but it's like from an outsider POV, what looks best on me? Does it look better to have my blush? right here does it look better to have it right here i don't know kind of slightly bringing it down on the cheek but not too far down because we want the face to try and remain lifted as possible now because i am obsessed with cream blushes especially for the summertime i'm gonna go in with a second one this is the fenty bikini martini cream blush mine looks horrible because i use the same brush for my cream contour as i do so it looks really bad yeah it's a really bright fun pink but just a little goes a long way and i just feel like it adds so much like pop to the blush and it can layer well on other blushes now i'm going to dust the hourglass powder over the rest of my face now that that's on it may look like i'm putting on a lot but i'm not it's just i can barely get anything on my brush because this freaking powder is like pretty much out and i'm like trying to salvage all the corners of it so okay now we're gonna do brows i hate this step so much um i use the kosas brow pencil right now so love that and it's in the shade dark brown basically i just spoolie my eyebrows hairs down which looks a little crazy and i look in the mirror and kind of just fill in any area that is super sparse of hair and when I say fill in, I mean like I'm using like very thin light handed strokes to like I have like kind of a bald spot in my eyebrow like right there at the front, especially compared to this side. So I always like to try and fill that in because my hair right there, it, it'll grow above it, but it will not grow like right there for whatever reason. So just trying to fill that little spot in. Okay, so the top is done. And then I'm just gonna brush them back up and brush through what I just did to sort of like make it more natural looking. Brushing up and I don't really like to fill in the bottom if I like absolutely need to for whatever reason, if my brows are like uneven, I will do like tiny, tiny little hair like strokes and then brush them out, but nothing too crazy on the bottom usually. And I normally have to fill in the front part of this one because compared to my other eyebrow, like the hair just doesn't grow in as far. It's quite annoying. Okay, that's good enough for me. I really wanna like start getting my eyebrows threaded. I tried to go to somebody a long time ago and it didn't work out because um, I think she got COVID or something and I just never rescheduled. My Benefit 24 hour brow setter brow gel and I'm just going to brush up. We're not doing anything crazy with the brows. I just want them to look natural, but I want them to stay in place because my brow hairs are literally curly sometimes. So I want things to stay 
where they're meant to. And I struggle because this brow, the hairs stay up so well and like naturally kind of grow more upwards. But then my other eyebrow, the hairs just don't really do that for some reason. Now we can finally move on to eyes. I'm so excited because I'm gonna be trying out this NARS. Um, this is the Summer Unrated palette. She's beautiful and I love the mirror on her. I've been using it this whole time. And we're just gonna do like a natural eye because I don't wanna do anything too crazy because I'm just going to dinner. However, I cannot wait to play around with some of these deeper like purple shades. I'm gonna go in with an IT Cosmetics. This is like just their fluffy brush. I don't know which one it is. I've had it for so long. And I'm gonna go in with a mix of like these two shades right here. The top left two. Just go all over the lid and in the crease to provide a nice base. So far, first impressions. I feel like the shadows are pigmented for sure, and it doesn't take a lot on the brush. And I really think that this is blending super smoothly, and I'm able to like really work with it, which I appreciate big time. Okay, and I'm gonna take my Huda Beauty um, Smoke and Smudge brush. I'm gonna do those same colors under my lash line. Kind of meet it with what I dragged out on the outer. Cause as you can see, I kind of pull the eyeshadow out and I will clean it up in a second. But for now, I want to connect the shadow to the lower lash line. I wanna get Botox in my forehead so bad. Um, Cause these lines are so bad, especially when I wear makeup, cause makeup just settles into, I have like one that's like pretty deep in the forehead and it may not look that bad right now. Cause I feel like this, I didn't really put much foundation on my forehead at all. So it's not really setting, but I don't know why. I just like, I'm not scared of doing it. I'm gonna take my MAC 217. I remember the day I bought this and thinking like it was like the most expensive makeup purchase I was gonna make with my own money. Um, cause I was like, I cannot believe I'm paying this much for a brush. And now there's like way more expensive brushes out there but I thought that I needed this to like be able to actually do my makeup correctly because I always struggled with eyeshadow so much and I thought it was gonna solve all my problems and it didn't, but now that I'm better at it, I know how to use it better. I'm gonna go in, I'm honestly gonna mix a little bit of this green shade just because I think it'll look pretty with my eyes. I'm like saying that like I question it. Actually, no, we're not gonna do that. Um, I'm just gonna do this shade right here. I'm gonna stick to this neutral thing we have going on. I'm just going to lightly put this in the outer V. Yeah, I wanna get Bort Bortox, huh? Um, what? I wanna get Botox or Dysport. Like I've heard about Dysport. I don't really remember what the difference is, but I would love to get a little bit of that in my forehead. It's because I didn't wear a lot of sunscreen. Um, growing up and I was always on the beach. I did wear sunscreen, I just didn't wear it every single time I went to the beach, which was my problem. And then also I never wore sunglasses or hats growing up. And so I was always squinting in the sun and I used to like literally teach people how to surf in the water for like four and a half hours and I would have no flipping sunglasses or a hat on. So I would literally be squinting like that for the whole time, especially against like the reflective sand and water um so that's why my forehead wrinkles are the way they are it's my fault but whatever so i'm gonna go back with the huda beauty um brush and do that dark color just on the outer corner of the under part and then i'm gonna use the more narrow small end um the smudge part of the brush and i'm just gonna mix this shimmery shade and this pink one because the pink's really pretty i have my eye on it I'm gonna do a little mix mix and I'm gonna put that. Oh, this is so pretty, you guys. I'm just doing this on just the lid. That is gorgeous. You're kidding. Sometimes you just need to get re inspired with eyeshadow palettes to have one to play around with because I haven't bought a new one since fall of 2020. So that's a while for me, honestly. But I honestly just don't wear makeup a lot. The balloon was flying out my window. Like it was flying by and it just like freaked me out because I didn't know what it was. And it was a black balloon. So it looked like an animal or something. I'm just blending this side of it where I stopped putting the shimmer just so that it blends together better. Okay, we're going back to the hourglass powder. 
and the Real Technique sponge because now I'm going to sort of carve out the eyeshadow just so it is more of a clean look. And I'm just going to put the powder like so, just a really small amount. We're gonna take the Morphe M510 brush and just kind of dust that little bit of powder away and then blend the top of the eyeshadow. Okay, next, I'm so excited for this part too. We're gonna try a new eyeliner. I've wanted to try this eyeliner for so long, so I'm so excited to be trying it with you guys. All right, sorry, I had to switch out my camera battery because my camera died. I also am noticing that it's getting dark outside, so I'm gonna increase that lighting a little bit. So sorry for the inconsistent lighting. Next question is where did I put these new products? Oh, they're right here. So I got this Urban Decay 24-7 Glide-On Pencil. I've been wanting to try these for so long, and I've just been buying like cheaper ones to avoid having to pay the price for this, which like, I pay the price for other makeup, but something about buying an expensive eyeliner just doesn't sit right with me. And it's not even that these are expensive, they're like 20 something dollars, but I just couldn't do it. So what we're gonna do, this is a like deep brown, but it has some like reflective silver shimmers in it. And it also reflects kind of like a different color in a way. I use this Morphe um, M432. It's like a flat liner brush. This is in the shade Corrupt. I really want to try a couple of the other colors, but I got this because I thought it would be most flattering on my natural eye color and just like my skin tone from what I saw on the website. But what we're going to do is I'm going to draw oh so subtly. Literally the angle that my lower lash line is going in, draw straight out from there just a tiny amount. And then I'm gonna use that brush to smoke it. So here we go. I'm also bringing it on the lower lash line just a tad. I'm gonna start smoking because I have no idea how fast this stuff dries. I don't want it to dry down. But back to the Botox conversation, I'm a little scared to get anything because i just like it's just an expensive habit first of all and i don't have literally anything against people who do use botox i just don't know why i'm scared of it you know i think it's just starting something new and i also have just like seen how sometimes it like travels into other parts of people's faces weird and i just don't want that to happen to me okay i just finished getting this eye done you all can probably tell it's just like a very very small wing and it's just like just enough to smoke and lift the eye a little bit so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And what I ended up doing on this side, just to make it a little bit more opaque, I put a little bit of this directly onto the brush and then just kind of like use the brush to smoke it straight out. This is just way easier than using a liquid liner in my opinion. And I kind of brought it like halfway down my eye. I didn't wanna bring it all the way in because I feel like that's when it starts like make your eye look smaller. And I do also blend out the part on my lash line. Like I don't only blend it out on the edge. Just so it's not so harshly starting and stopping. I always struggle with this eye, so here we go. And then just because I have kind of like messed with my eyelids a little bit, I'm going to use my finger and get those same two like little shimmery shades from the palette and pat it right back in the center just to bring back that sparkle because this typically happens after I do my eyeliner because I end up like touching my lid a few times and I just make want to make sure that the eyes are popping the way they should. Doing makeup is so therapeutic when you're not brushed. Like this is like so ideal for me. I love it. Like I get so mad about wasting time with so many things but taking my time to put on makeup like that is the when i have the most patience in my life you know what i mean like there's nothing that beats just like listening to music filming it chatting with your friends if you're getting ready with friends and even if you're just by yourself like making yourself feel good with makeup is just it's truly an art form okay curled the lashes now we're gonna go in with mascara i don't really know i've been using grande lash and i highly recommend it um, I'm gonna use, don't use Telescopic or Thrive. The Thrive Cosmetics is way easier to take off, but this gives just a tad bit more length. I don't really feel like I need the length right now, but we're gonna do it anyways. Um, this is easier to take off, so I'm gonna do this. 
Okay, and I really just try to like focus this on the base of the lashes. I used to apply my mascara in a very spidery, spidery, spidery way, like in high school and even through college, like I would sometimes. But I try to just only get a little bit on the ends, but focus most of it on the base and then brush them like this way and up instead of straight up if that makes sense to sort of just make the eyes look more open i don't do too much on the inner part like i do like one little quick coat and then i'm done there's the mascara i feel like this looks so good because the inner eye is like bright but then the outer eye it's like a little sultry smoky vibe next eye i know that there's some messiness with it but we will clean it up with a spoolie or q-tip here in a second and i do a very very thin layer on the lower lash and this stuff is definitely not necessary like i think my face is fine as is but i'm gonna do it anyways because i'm just extra and i'm going to go in with a little bit of bronzer um powder bronzer and a little bit of powder blush and highlights but nothing crazy because we've already taken care of that for the most part so i'm going to use you know what just for the sake of trying something new for you guys that i haven't used in my last get ready with me's i'm gonna use this little sample <laughs> baby nars bronzer this is the laguna bronzer i'm gonna use a little bit of this um because i got it in like a birthday sample and i've only used it like twice so i haven't really gotten to see its full power and just kind of lightly brush that on where the cream bronzer was i'm gonna do a little bit on my jaw this whole side of my face is just like a question mark for me i never know what's going on it looks so different from the other side of my face in terms of my side profile and it just really really bothers me like i said earlier i love my blush i'm gonna do a pop of this um tickled pink revlon blush in the same spot with this Fenty blush or bronzer brush i just i kind of stick it on the front part of it instead of like the tip of it for the blush i just lightly circle it in the same place we put the cream blush earlier to make sure she's nice and blended we are gonna blend it i know it's not blended right now i'm doing the benefit cookie highlighter with this morphe m438 brush i'm just doing literally a dab right at that high point of my cheek and then i'm gonna put it in the inner corner of my eyes just to make it a little extra blinding because i'm so extra with the highlighter i have not given up on that and i never will i know a lot of people have but i have not i'm gonna use this spoolie and get this freaking mascara that i got everywhere off i normally use a q-tip and this is like my second time using a spoolie and that was way better i'm gonna curl my lashes now that my mascara has probably dried just a light little pump to the lashes you don't want to like really press down super duper hard you just want to do like some light pumps for a couple seconds i don't know how i feel about this yet initially i didn't really like it as much as my urban decay glow all-nighter setting spray but i've used it a few other times because i'm out of my glow setting spray and i've liked it the last two times i've used it so we'll see but i re do really like the mister on it so i'm gonna spray my face let that dry and then for lips we really don't need to do lips yet because i'm not leaving yet but i will go ahead and do them just for the sake of the video and getting pictures before it's pitch black outside lip liner of choice right now is the Too faced uh lady bold and the shade badass really cute packaging except mine's kind of malfunctioned and i like this part of it broke so i always have to yank it off and i don't really overline i overline the middle bottom but i don't overline the middle top because that just looks ridiculous on me and then I go along the line for the rest of the lip. This is just like literally the color of my lips. That's why I love it so much. Maybe a shade darker. I don't color them in, but I do like bring it in. I just picked up a new MAC Blankety. That's my other new product, but it's not new to me. Um, I have Cream Cup and it's a really pretty pink. To go with this from mac that i like a lot i don't really own a lot of lipstick it's pretty much just that in my mac blankety and then like this kkw one that i don't really care for but i lost my mac blankety in january when i went home for a friend's wedding and i miss it so much so i bought another one from ulta they did 20 percent off curbside orders if you place a curbside order for like a couple days this week so i was like sure um and that's when i got the nars palette this and then the um, eyeliner and I also used some points so I only paid like 30 bucks for all of it which was so nice doing a little bit of MAC blankety 
in the center of my lips lip gloss my buxom white russian is actually in my car right now and that's what i was going to use um i have this madison beer one that's like a nude i could do or i could do this peach perversion lust gloss from pat mcgrath i think i'm gonna do this I don't know sometimes i don't like i really love this gloss but like sometimes it just doesn't look right with the rest of my makeup so we'll see oh no this is good this is really good okay wait i'm so glad i picked this i haven't seen this gloss in like high quality lighting before it is insane like it is like this reflective beautiful look that i'm so obsessed with Got a little bit of extra product that i'm trying to dab out that's the lips and we are done oh i forgot to blend it eee, i said i was gonna blend everything earlier and then i did it so forgive me i just use my big fluffy brush i just do this a few times brushing upwards this is what it looks like just glowy subtle eye a little bit smoky pink nude lips this is like my go-to my favorite my hair actually turned out well today so bless thank god for that and that's the look but i'm going to figure out my jewelry purse shoes and outfit i have an idea of what i'm gonna wear so i'll be back and we'll figure that out last order of business before i show you all the outfit is the patrick ta um a dream champagne major glow body oil this stuff smells so like just luxurious and good and it's just like super let me show you guys in the ring light because it's way easier like look at the glow this gives and we're just gonna pop her on right here and here on the shoulders and it just gives like a nice wet glow look but rubbing it all in it's so crazy how different it looks in like this horrible lighting compared to the other lighting like, there's what the glow looks like stunning okay outfit details this dress is aritzia i love it so much i'm gonna be wearing it so often this summer because it's just really breathable comfortable i don't have to worry about it like riding up and getting too short because it's more of like a midi length almost but still above the knee and i love it i love the color of it i love how it fits it's really comfy but yeah green loving this green shoes are princess poly they're like a square toe sandal walk heel something easy to walk in i was torn between this and lace up like sandals but i went with these and then Purse is lovers and friends. I got it like in 2020, summer 2020. Y'all heard me rave about it. I love it so much. It's just so great with so many outfits and it's fun and different. And I've got to get my temporary paper license on my car to put in there for drinks. And then perfume, last step. I am trying out the dossier. I don't know how you say it. Dossier, that's not it either. I've heard it in YouTube ads, but I don't know how to say it. This is supposed to be a dupe for Rihanna's like perfume. And they also have dupes for like Baccarat Rouge and a lot of other really nice perfumes. And I got this one specifically because it had the word marshmallow in it. And I love anything marshmallow in terms of scents. And also I just love marshmallows. So I got this one. So I'm going to use this as the perfume. But I also really want to get the Baccarat Rouge dupe because that lotion I used earlier before my self-tanner smells like Baccarat Rouge. And it's like the best thing ever. So I'm going to do little spritz of this on each arm. Let it get on me it's like a very like the notes are marshmallow neroli bergamot those are the top notes middle notes are orange blossom honeysuckle jasmine and orris and the base notes are amber vanilla and musk and it smells really good so that's the outfits and that's these earrings i don't these are from target second hole is from Majuri and third hole is from studs gotta hurry putting on my initial necklace from revolve that i love so much i always get a lot of questions on it this has been my favorite initial necklace that i've ever had and y'all know i've been wearing these for years um but it's like beautiful it's a g for griffin's name where he is and um yeah for grandma and griffin and grandma and it's really pretty like gothic and has like the little diamonds on it but that's my get ready with me thank you so much for watching sticking along be sure to subscribe follow me on social media link down below give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it turn on post notifications and check out my podcast and blue podcast and i will see you all in my next video